Mountain News, first at four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, the national spotlight is on Kentucky this weekend with the run for the roses. But will the weather cooperate for everyone with outdoor plans? Let's begin with Chief Meteorologist Paige Noel with a first look at our forecast. Paige. Yeah, Steve, as you said it, that really that rain is going to impact us for your derby weekend, which is some sad news. So if you are going to Louisville, well, you're going to want to pack the rain gear. Here's a look at that forecast starting at 11 o'clock in the morning. That's really when we're going to see those showers start to begin over the area, really becoming soggy by the afternoon and even by the time right around that time the race starts. You'll notice temperatures are comfortable into those mid to upper 60s, but you're definitely going to need the rain jacket and the rain boots. Let's go ahead and break it down here a little bit. You'll notice those rain chances by noon. They're starting to approach especially the Louisville area increasing, especially by the time we get to that afternoon hour. They're showing right around at 3 o'clock and that continuing into right around 7 o'clock when that race is expected to begin. And then we see those continuing into the evening hours. You'll notice those rain chances are continuing for our area as well. Another thing we're going to have to keep an eye on is that severe outlook. Now, good news for Louisville, a few storms are possible, but not expecting anything severe. But for us here at home, we're sh showing that marginal risk down into the Cumberland Valley area, really areas along Kentucky over into Tennessee and over into Virginia as well. So that grilling forecast for here tomorrow. I know a lot of people like to grill out for the Derby. It's not looking the best 70 with showers and storms continuing throughout really the day tomorrow. Now what about that forecast for tonight and for the rest of that weekend? I'll have that coming up in just a few short minutes, Steve. All right, hopefully not a total washout. Paige, thank you. May is Mental Health Awareness Month and like adults, children also face mental health issues. WYMT's Macy Marie talked to a children's therapist about some of the problems in Eastern Kentucky and joins us from the newsroom with more. Macy. Steve, I talked to Jill Martin, a therapist who mainly okay. deals with children. She says kids who deal with traumatic experiences are more likely to suffer later on in life. Some of those experiences include child abuse or having a parent who is an addict. Reports show in Kentucky both overdose deaths and child abuse are above the national average. So many childhood experiences um, increases your risk of different things. And it's, it's things like heart disease and um, life expectancy. You can report child neglect or abuse in Kentucky at the number on your screen. That's 877-597-2331. Steve, I'll have more on this tonight at 530. All right, Macy, thank you. Rangers at the Cumberland Gap National Historical Park say along with spring comes bear sightings. Rangers say while bears are starting to come out, you can prevent them from coming near your home. They say avoid things like leaving food and bird feeders, putting trash out the night before garbage pickup, and avoid leaving extra food in your dog bowls. Those things can keep hungry bears from coming near you. What a wonderful treasure for us to have, but we can live harmoniously with bear and it requires work on our part and it's not work that's difficult. Rangers say if you happen to see a bear near your home or crossing the road, it's probably looking for food or new habitat and should not be a problem. Venezuela's political crisis is now moving to the forefront in Washington. From a White House call to Russia to a Pentagon meeting where the acting Secretary of Defense says all options are on the table. CNN's Emily Schmidt has more on what that may mean. For the first time in months, President Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin talked by phone Friday. I had a very good talk with President Putin probably uh, over an hour. And we talked about many things. Venezuela was one of the topics. We want to get some humanitarian aid. Right now, people are starving. They, they have no water. They have no food. The United Nations Human Rights Office says at least five people died in protests this week as embattled President Nicolas Maduro faces an uprising led by opposition leader Juan Guaido. It is their overarching duty to ensure the protection of the people of Venezuela. The Venezuelan power struggle is causing tensions between Washington and Moscow. The Kremlin supports Maduro, while the White House recognizes Guaido as the interim president. This is our hemisphere. It's not where the Russians ought to be interfering. 
After a Friday meeting of the president's national security team at the Pentagon, Acting Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan said off camera the team is looking at options for U.S. intervention in Venezuela. When asked could that include naval deployment, he answered all options are comprehensive, but there is a lot of water nearby. Meanwhile, opposition leader Juan Guaido says there will be more protests Saturday and that they will continue to grow peacefully. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden threw in his support for Guaido. President Trump says he cooperated fully with special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation, and that is as far as he is willing to go. The president is pushing back against Democrat-led investigations on Capitol Hill. The president does not want former White House counsel Don McGahn to comply with a subpoena to testify and turn over documents. I had him testifying already for 30 hours. So is the answer no? And it's really, so I don't think I can let him and then tell everybody else you can't, because especially him, because he was a counsel. The president has filed lawsuits to block subpoena requests for his tax returns and business records. He says he assumes Mueller reviewed those returns during his investigation, but Democrats are not so sure. The House Judiciary Committee is asking Mueller to come testify. The U.S. economy is on a roll. 263,000 jobs were added last month, and the unemployment rate fell to 3.6 percent. That is the lowest number since December of 1969, almost 50 years ago. Wages are up, too. The average hourly worker makes 3.2 percent more than a year ago. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Friday afternoon, and they're probably responding to those numbers today. The Dow closes up at nearly 200 points, up 196. An iconic hazard business is closing its doors by the end of the month. Gordon's Photo Center has been in business for more than half a century. Its owner has photographed multiple sitting presidents and major events like the Kentucky Derby. But at 72 years old, he says he's ready to retire and spend more time with his family. He says he will miss his customers, though. And I love people coming here with pictures that look horrible, old, old pictures, and I work with them and make them good again, and I bring back memories. And uh, the best thing I can get is somebody look at a picture and they start crying because it's so good. He says he wanted to make sure his building was sold before he closed, and he's done that. We'll have much more with Paul Gordon coming up tonight at 6. Pikeville High School celebrated its seniors this morning with a special Senior College Decision Day. The pep rally style event brought parents and students to the high school's gym as the senior class walked by, holding banners to signify the colleges they have chosen to attend in the fall. Principal Jason Boer says the school wants to congratulate its seniors for their accomplishments, but also wants them to be able to leave something behind for their peers. Also to allow our other underclassmen to see that we had 100% of our kids going to college next year and giving them something to strive for in the future. Boer says this is the first year the school has done this, but he hopes to continue it annually. Actor Peter Mayhew, most famously known for his portrayal of the giant furry Chewbacca in the Star Wars movies, has died. His family says Mayhew died in his Texas home Tuesday. He grew up in Yorkshire, England, and was a hospital attendant in the 1970s. George Lucas, the Star Wars creator, called Mayhew to audition for the role of Chewbacca. Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker, says Mayhew and the lovable character he played shared similar qualities. He just radiated happiness and warmth. He was always up for a laugh. Mayhew is survived by his wife and three children. He was 74. A new study finds 70% of millennials still receive financial help from their parents. I'm Hillary Lane with more on how parents are stepping in when kids are in a pinch. And showers and storms look to continue into this weekend. We'll break down that full forecast in just a few short minutes. 